And joining us tonight in the studio is Mary Margaret Olihan, senior reporter for The Daily Signal. Mary Margaret, always so great to have you with us. Oh, always great to be here. A lot to get to, but first, I'm going to get your reaction to the vice president's speech in Florida and also the fact um, that she quoted the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> yes, this was a very interesting speech that Kamala Harris gave in Tallahassee, Florida, very close to the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis. She gave it on the 50th anniversary of Roe v. Wade, and in this speech, she talked about the importance of the Declaration of Independence, which guarantees us, of course, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, except that Kamala Harris did not mention this right to life. And of course, people on Twitter were very quick to point this out. My friend Jerry Dunleavy, I think, was one of the first people to say, where is the right to life in this speech on the anniversary of Roe v. Wade? Very noticeably left out of that speech. And you kind of have to wonder, Tracy, who thought this was a good idea to not mention the right to life in a speech on the anniversary of Roe v. Wade when this is such a pivotal part of the pro-life movement's argument that every person has a right to life? It just seems like a very obvious move to leave that out. But yeah, in general, the speech was very interesting. She also took a swipe at Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, um, his efforts to keep the state open during COVID, to promote freedom in the state. And she pretty much said, look, this state isn't protecting women's right to abortion, so how could it be the free, to, free state that he says it is? Yeah, something else that happened last night, a protesters yes. outside of Justice Brett Kavanaugh's home. What more can you tell us about that? Yes, so my uh, video producer, Tim, and I went out there to Justice Kavanaugh's house. It was a disgusting night. <laughs> it was freezing cold rain. Tim and I were went up to the house, and there's U.S. Marshals protecting it. The protesters, as they do, they kind of processed by the house, chanting, singing, saying things like uh, calling him a rapist in, re in regards to the allegations from Christine Ford against him. They talked about how he was taking away the right to abortion. And we tried to speak with them. They were not interested in speaking with us. But we did speak with some of the U.S. Marshals that were guarding the house there. Also, later at Justice Roberts' house, we spoke with them. And it was very interesting, Tracy. They talked about how they thought that, one, that even though we asked them about this federal code that protects the justices from picketing and parading in front of their homes, they said that these protesters weren't breaking the law since they were on the sidewalk. Well, I've been speaking with some legal experts that are telling me that's not the case. Now, these U.S. Marshals also told us that they thought that arresting the protesters would only lead more protesters to show up in Kavanaugh's neighborhood. I believe they said more and more would come. They also said that they thought the protesters would think of themselves as martyrs if they were arrested, and it might spark more attention-seeking antics like this. So it was just very interesting conversations that we haven't had before with law enforcement about why they are not arresting these protesters. When 18 U.S. Code 1507 says that you're not allowed to picket or parade in front of a justice's home with the intent of influencing their decisions. You know, thank you for your report. I have to say that right off the bat and all the great work that you do, because otherwise we wouldn't know about these stories. We're almost out of time, 30 seconds left or so. But I also know you were reporting at the March for Life. So quickly, tell us your thoughts about that day. Oh, it was a great day. It was um, so fun to be down there and speaking with the crowd. You know, I don't think there's any other protest that I've been to that is so full of youth and energy and happiness and just life. I mean, you see mothers and fathers there with their big families. You see mothers and fathers there with their children who have disabilities, but they brought them to the March for Life. Uh, there's adults with disabilities who are in wheelchairs that are making sure that they can also attend the March for Life. Kids with signs that say they're so happy that their mother chose life and they were adopted. I talked to one little guy that I was just showing you that video, mm -hmm. so cute. I so asked cute. him, why are you pro-life? And he's sitting on the shoulders of another girl, and he says, because that, per that baby might be somebody's friend someday. So it's just a very happy day, and in contrast with a lot of the other protests that I have covered recently, like the Women's March or the protests over Roe v. Wade at the Supreme Court, it's just such a visible contrast between this energy and happiness and this anger and vitriol, you know, going from the March for Life to Kavanaugh's house in the freezing rain where these people are shouting these horrible things as they process by his house. Um, it's a very, very noticeable contrast between the, the energy and the motivating factors in these different movements. Yeah, it definitely is. And thank you so much for doing what you do and for being here today. I always appreciate it. Oh, of course. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. We love it. Thank you so much, Mary Margaret.